Princess Merida is a Disney fan favorite. She's the opposite of everything most princesses stand for, and we love her for it. If you want to look into Merida's life after her movie ends, we're here to give it to you. You won't believe who we think Merida walks down the aisle with. Stick around to find out who. If this is your first time visiting the things, smash that subscribe button. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Now, this is what happened to Merida after Happily Ever After. Brave is one of the most groundbreaking Disney original stories. It gave us the very first princess who isn't obsessed with marriage or falling in love. Being boy crazy isn't all there is to life. Merida knows she's fine on her own. She's also completely unafraid to turn her nose up at typical princess stuff. She's not a fan of fluffy dresses, fancy parties, or other girly stuff. She's a rough and tumble warrior. She spent her childhood wrestling with her father and little brothers too. She loves her horse, Angus, and works very hard to take care of him. Disney creators even wrote a scene showing Merida mucking out his stall herself. They wanted to demonstrate just how different she was from other princesses. She's not afraid of a little hard work or manure. She's also a master of archery. Not too many other princesses can say they're a master with a weapon. Mulan could probably hold her own against her. Maybe that's why she has so many fans ship the two together. Relationships aren't really her thing, though. The best thing about Merida is her independence. She isn't afraid of being alone. She can depend on herself. When her family pressures her to get married, she sticks up for her freedom. Well, I'm not going to be like you! She wants to wait until she's ready to commit and settle down. She won't marry for political convenience, and she wants to marry for love. To a modern person that sounds really smart and responsible. In 10th century Scotland, it was madness. Women were expected to do as they were told. Can you picture Merida as obedient? We didn't think so. She was way ahead of her time. So we know she's the best. At the end of the film, her family members are restored to their true forms and everyone seems happy. Then what happens? Since she won't be getting married anytime soon, Merida needs something to fill her time. She can't just spend her life cooped up in the castle. She's not the type to sit around embroidering until the end of time. To keep herself busy, Merida begins a school for girls. Instead of teaching them etiquette or ballroom dancing, Merida teaches them really valuable skills. Horseback riding, archery, and public speaking are the basics. She spends her days building strong women out of all the girls in the kingdom. She encourages them not to get married just because they're told it's time. She wants them to wait until they're truly in love and ready. With her small army of little girls, Merida delights in terrorizing the kingdom with practice raids and warrior games. We love imagining her crazy grin as she rides Angus ahead of her tiny troops. A horde of little Scottish girls riding sheep and wielding toy swords and bow and arrows is nothing to mess with. You wouldn't hear of many girls being bullied in this kingdom, they'd even stick up for the boys. She hasn't gotten her newfound respect for bears either. Before her mother and little brothers were transformed, bears were seen as a barbaric enemy in the kingdom. Now that Merida has spent so much time getting to know the species, she sees them as so much more. Her experience inspires her to give bears a PR makeover. She launches a public education campaign to teach her people all about these misunderstood creatures. They aren't just vicious beasts out for blood. Bears are generally pretty peaceful and laid back. They prefer to stay stay away from people and live quiet lives. Merida helps people see that bears aren't evil monsters bent on their destruction. With the public less afraid of their fury brown neighbors, bear hunting begins to decline. People become less fearful. They don't see any reason to aggressively hunt down these magnificent creatures anymore. With the important first step in place, Merida begins an AA conversation program. It's not enough to reduce how many bears are killed. Merida wants to ensure that there will be bears in Scotland for future generations to enjoy. She spearheads a program to limit the number of bears that can be killed, protect areas where bears live with their young, and even track breeding season to ensure a healthy population. She teaches this respect for bears to her students as well. With those fearless ladies as their guardians, the bears of Scotland are safe. No one is going to mess with them anytime soon. Merida is a princess, which means one day she'll be queen. The only way for that to happen is sadly for her and her brothers to lose their mom and dad. That's a sad fact of inheriting a throne. Death is inevitable and eventually, the king and queen would both pass away, leaving Merida to rule. After their deaths, there would be a grand coronation for Princess Merida. This would be a pretty important moment for her. Not only would she become queen during this ceremony, but the days before and after would establish what kind of leader she would be. She would probably face more pressure to get married. 
married. An unwed female leader was a rare thing in her time, but Merida would hold her ground. She wouldn't be forced to marry as a young woman, so she certainly wouldn't be forced as a confident queen. Much like the archery contest in the movie, Merida comes up with a clever plan to silence her suitors. This time, instead of fighting for her own hand, she's going to take it. These days, a lot of women have jumped onto the newest trend in marriage. Brides no longer find a groom necessary, and they've been marrying themselves. That's right, one-person marriage is a new trend. This very modern fad is perfect for our Merida. She refused to marry just for political convenience. She only wants to marry someone she truly loves. And find love in our own time. Merida is the kind of person who would only choose someone she could respect, someone she saw as her true equal, who fits that bill better than herself. She's someone truly worthy of her own love and admiration. She obviously holds herself in high esteem. So to stop the pressure for her to find a husband, Merida decides to marry herself. Solo weddings can be just as beautiful, meaningful, and ornate as a traditional ceremony. Merida is a rock star queen and she doesn't need a king to be happy. Imagine the excitement when the royal wedding is announced. People would freak out. Gossip would fly about who the lucky man is. People would wonder why the groom's identity was being kept so quiet. The wedding would have to be fit for a queen. No expense would be spared for the extravagant affair. Even Angus would be dressed to the nines, his mane and tail braided flowers in his hair. The handsome horse would really be a show stopper. The triplets wouldn't be forgotten. Merida would be sure to have plenty of sweets on hand for her three favorite young men. For once, they would all be clean, well-dressed, and at the peak of their manners. On the big day, nobility would gather from all of the clans to see Merida walk down the aisle. Each suspecting a man from another clan must be the lucky groom. The castle would be totally decked out with flowers, banners, and finery. At the end of the fabric and petal-lined aisle stands the officiant. He's giddy to participate in the wedding of a queen. Bagpipes play as Queen Merida, in a stunning white gown, enters the hall. She confidently takes slow, metered steps toward the officiant, waiting at the end. By now, everyone is in shock. They've caught on that there is no groom, but none of them could ever be prepared for what was to come next. At the end of her bridal procession, Merida clears her throat and proudly announces that she's decided on the only person worthy enough for her to marry, herself. All of her guests would be stunned. None would know how to react. The reception would be full of blank pale faces. The triplets would be delighted by their sister's stunning display. They would dance with her with joy and celebrate her fierce independence. Obviously, the ceremony wouldn't be a legally binding shindig. It would just be a lavish symbol to her subjects that her martial status was no longer up for discussion. With her wedding behind her, it's time for Merida to get her kingdom in order. There's so much change to be made. Might our young people decide for themselves who they will love? The queen's frustration with the way women are treated in her kingdom would inspire sweeping reform. She would make it illegal to refuse any interested woman from participating in the Highland Games. She knows that women are just as strong and capable as men. Queen Merida would also overhaul marriage laws, ensuring that both husbands and wives had equal rights and responsibilities. She'd be the first ruler to make marriage a true 50-50 partnership. With women on equal footing with men, her kingdom would be twice as prosperous and happy. It's obvious to anyone who's seen the film that Merida loves kids. The way she treats her baby brothers makes it clear that she thinks of children as her peers. Even being so much older, she never treats them like they aren't people. This love of children would eventually lead Merida to want to become a mother. Without a husband, she probably wouldn't have any natural children of her own. Like any liberated woman, being single isn't going to stop our queen from becoming a parent. Merida decides to adopt a child. She needs to make sure her child will be legally recognized as an heir should something happen to her and her brothers. Those details could all be worked out. When you're a queen, you can afford any amount of legal help. She's not afraid of anything. Being a single mom to more than one child wouldn't face her at all. She already grew up with triplets, so a set of twins would be nothing to the brave queen. With her mind made up and the legal work out of the way, Merida chooses her children. Isn't it fun to picture her with two cute little kids in tow? A little boy who she teaches to hear women's voices. A little girl who she teaches to speak up for herself. Her children would be royalty. That probably means they'd be spoiled just a little. But with a mom like Merida, they'd definitely learn the value of hard work. Her kids would work in the stables as she did. They would help the castle staff with chores. Her daughter would be a very skilled archer and her son a talented horse trainer. They would grow to be compassionate and responsible royals. They would go on to embrace 
embrace their own independence and find love in their own time. Merida would joyfully celebrate her children's marriages, especially her daughters, who would choose her partner carefully and only after she was ready. As time passed, Merida would welcome grandchildren into the kingdom as well. With so much love and family to share her life, Merida would be a happy and fulfilled queen. Merida deserves nothing but the best. After she courageously saves her family from life as bears, she goes on serving her people. She teaches the young women of her kingdom to be proud and strong. The belief that you can save them yourself. She shares her love of archery with the people she rules over. She protects her ancestral lands and the animals that call them home. She's ahead of her time in so many ways. She turns her people's opinions of bears around with the power of her words and compassion. She shows her people what it means to choose yourself over tradition. The women of her kingdom enjoy unprecedented rights and freedoms. She chooses motherhood for herself and raises strong and respectful children. Merida truly is a leader worth our our fandom. She really did live happily ever after. We hope you like seeing past the credits of Brave. We'll see you next time on The Things.